Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Explore, we're going to continue on with Frankie, the monster that we're building for Code Pen to do this flash kind of loading screen thing. Woohoo! So the idea is, as the loading page is happening, these dials will all go up, electricity will be on here, with this blend mode or something and then when it finishes Frankie will uh, light up or become green or something like that and say I'm loaded <laughs> Ta -da! there we go so this is for the code pen challenge for a flash intro screen so let's reduce this down pop it on over here and load it up in Zim. So what we've been doing is we've been taking a look at it in Browser Plus over here on the right hand side and that's what we've got done so far. Alright, we're going to be uh, going back and forth here now as we make this a bit more dynamic. So let's do a quick review and maybe put in some comments here. So these are main section comments, and we will say that these are the parts, I suppose, or the tiles, I don't know, the tiles, I guess. So that's one tile. We had some style on the tile, style on the tile. Let's call it parts instead of stuff. Um, this was the tile with all the dials and the sliders. Bar length, we got style there. We may as well put the bar length in the style as well, just to keep it consistent and we don't need anything there. All right, so we're styling both the slider and the dial kind of at the same time. Uh, no problem. We did run into a problem with the background color of darker, but we specified specifically the dial at that time. <laughs> specified specifically. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, right. So what are these things? These things are Frankie, aren't they? So copy that thing or not? May as well make it the same length, huh? Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. And we can call this Frankie. How do you spell Frankie? Like that. What do we got on Frankie? I'm not sure what these things are or if we're going to need them. We probably will. Some of them are going to be heads and eyes and things. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to that and, and find those a little bit later. There's the hair. What is this blob? That's hair. Great. And what's this tile? That's his teeth. <laughs> Frankie's teeth. Okay, super. The next part we're going to do is, how about we can either do the electricity or we can do the loading of the dials you know, and, and sliders. Hmm, let's tackle the electricity. Electricity. This it doesn't really have that much stuff in it. It does. Oh, and one of these section dividers. Section dividers help us as, as we continue to build, we can sort of scroll up and see the sections um, easily and it helps us find where we were. All right, so for the electricity, we want a blob and then we're going to animate the points of the blob and we're going to put all of this on top. So let's go find our blob stuff. Oh, here it is over here. The neopaths again. Remember this? this is how we made the hair. But instead of making hair, I suppose we could just use these points. If we double click on the points, it turns them into different things. So now uh, as we go through the system, this double clicking here turns them into a, an angle thing. Double clicking again, I'm not sure, I can't remember if I described this in the last one, but anyway, a bit of review doesn't hurt. Now we get the single one. So the next click after the V is a single. If we were to, and that what that does is it makes points like that, and that, that'll be better for us for electricity. If we double click again, it goes back to, to start like that and then we have to double click through the series. But we want these things. And we'll throw uh, like one over here, uh, one here, one here. And this will go up. We're making electricity now. And I think we need one more. And you can click on the sides and get another one. 
clicking on the sides, getting another one like that. And then this one comes up to somewhere in there. So the classic kind of electricity is a little bit zigzaggedy, like uh, something like that, like lightning bolt type things. And we can add color to it later. The, the, the tool here is in pizzazz, it's just doing it without uh, fill. And let's start these all roughly flat because what we're going to do is wiggle them up and down anyway. So it, it doesn't really have to look like electricity, but we'll start it somewhat like that. And I'm offsetting them so that as this wiggles across like that, it just doesn't look like it's in exactly the same place. So I think that will make for some, some cooler kind of wiggle bits. That's probably good. And we'll get the code for that and copy it. Over two. Oh, not the challenge. Reducing this. So these are. This is our electricity points. E um, const electric points is equal to that. Oh, I just remembered when we called the points up above hair. That was is really the hair points just to be kind of consistent with it. This blob would actually be the hair, so if we had to put a const hair on there, we could, and, and then we're consistent. So this will be const electric is equal to a new blob. And in this new blob, we can say points. I'm just going directly to the points this time. Uh, electric points, there it is drop this down in case we want to do a few other things. I'm not sure how many, such a set color, color, colon, white, like that. Probably good. Dot center. And let's have a look. Woohoo. Ooh, Frankie's got a mustache. Oh, it's interactive false because the hair, like we set a style of interactive false on the blobs. And that's great. Otherwise, we could pick this up and <laughs> just Frankie's fine mustache that he's got there. Hello, <laughs> mustachio man. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, we're going to have to scale that, it looks like. So, dot scale three times, will that go across? Maybe a little bit more. This electricity is going to be going and well, we'll do four. That'll go off the edge. That's probably okay. And now let's animate the parts of that blob. Dot center. To animate the blob, we animate the the point controls. So that's a point controls property. And, and let's see what what are we going to want to do with that? We're going to want to wiggle it. And we'll wiggle it up and down in the Y. So shall we try just one point? I don't know which one is point zero, but anyway, it would be something like point controls uh, at three, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> We're just try wiggling one and see what it looks like. Dot wiggle. Um, we wiggle the Y, and oh. It's the blobs point control, so that's electric dot, and we're going to have to repeat this because we're going to ask for the y position of it. So therefore, we could probably say something like let point equal this point right here, and then we can wiggle the point uh, point dot wiggle point dot y. So that's the starting y of it. And we'll may as well wiggle it about the starting y. We'll wiggle it a maximum of, let's see, it's the, how high are we? We're 600 high roughly. And eight, this is 600 high, 300 each way, I suppose. So a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 300 pixels. And then in a certain amount of time, like, uh, I don't know, 0.5 seconds to one second. We'll just try that. So let's see what that does. We refresh. Oh, right. We've got, it's a blob. So anytime we manually change a blob, we actually have to update the blob shape. We don't automatically test to see if it's being wiggled or animated, because that's just a lot of processing power. 
So we, we definitely handle, like if this were interactive, we definitely handle being able to drag things about and we update it then, that's great. But if we're manually updating something like we're doing here with this wiggle, then we need to constantly update it. So we're wiggling it all the time. That means we need a ticker, not a talker, <laughs> not a talker, but a ticker dot add. And we add an arrow function to a ticker like that. So it'll run this arrow function basically at the frame rate, 30 frames or 60 frames per second, 30 on mobile. And here we want to update the blob and the blob is called electric dot update like that. And let's have a look. All right, we're wiggling point three, which happens to be the bloody point off the screen. Okay, so how about point zero? Which one is point zero? Just add interest. Okay, well, why is it going so much? That looks like way more than 300. Oh, we've scaled it four times. Okay, divided by four, I guess, and a minimum divided by four. How high are we? I think we're maybe we're 800 high. 800 high, okay, so let's go. We don't need to go right off the screen on that wiggle, but we could go up to 400 for sure. Should we go a minimum of 100? These kind of look silly, don't they? Well, when we just cheat, we know that that's going to be 100. And this is going to be, we can do it, uh, 20, 30. And then it's being multiplied by 4. Yeah, OK. That might be all right. Let's get them all wiggling. So to get them all to wiggle, we basically want to do what? We want to loop through all of the points and get them to wiggle. So that looks like this, loop through electric point controls. Point controls is like one of these points. Um, points is the points is the same as this array right here. And that's just an array of data. So points, the blob dot points is this array of data. But uh, the blob will then turn that data into actual containers that are holding all of the little um, sticks, the Bezier sticks and stuff like handles. So that is called point controls. And we're going to just animate the whole control, the uh, whole point control up and down. You can also animate parts of it, like the sticks inside and stuff in, in different ways. But you know, we'll leave that for, for other explorers. So we are looping through all of the point controls. Each time we get a point control, which is um, we can call it point, I guess. And that's an arrow function. And then we're going to point dot wiggle inside of there. We no longer need a let the first point. That was only the first point. So we're looping through the point controls. We're getting the point. And then we're going to wiggle that point a certain amount. And we get this. OK, that's kind of cool. Let's put a difference on it and see what happens when we put a difference filter on it. Or we could color it or something. I think white might be good. A difference filter on what? The electric dot blend mode. So that's a blend mode, not a difference filter. Well, whatever, a blend mode. And we will call it difference. So that's the short chainable bleh for blend mode. <laughs> it's like, nice. We've got rot for root. <laughs> I wonder if we would want two of those. I think so. Maybe even more. More. Give us more electricity. So that would be const electric two. <laughs> electric two is equal to electric dot uh, clone. So we'll clone that. That just grabs the same one. And I can't remember if it clones blend modes or not. Where did we add the blob to the stage? How did this blob even get here? Oh, there it is, dot center. Okay. Um, let's just see what the clone does. 
can't remember if I need to get what properties that has. I think I have to add it still. So dot center. Do I have to scale it? No, there it is in behind. Why don't we see? Why don't we see it as white? Oh, it didn't clone the blend mode. Here, did it clone the blend? Clone the blend mode? I'm not sure. Looks like it scaled it. They kept the scale. I don't know why it's uh, why we can't see it there. Const electric two uh, right. Um, we would have to wiggle what? We'd have to do another loop through the the points of this guy electric two. And we would want to electric two update and let's see what happens when it animates electric two. Um, well, okay, we're back in action. Back in action. All right, so I'm not sure what was going on with that blend mode when it wasn't moving, maybe. Uh, but whatever, it's working. So what do we do there? We took two, we, we have one points, we made an electric, we cloned it, or we could have just copied that and remade it, if you don't know about clone. And then we looped through these points of, probably that's easiest, that receives each point. We could have looped through the number of points and then used you know electric point controls at at that number and electric two control point or point controls at that number and done it all in one loop. But I think that looks fine. This is only done once at the beginning to set those wiggles, so it's it's no big deal. And then we're updating both of those blobs and we've got electricity. How's the um how is the how's that visual? You like that? I think so. If we had sound it would be even cooler. But it does kind of look like electricity enough. OK, great. Let's ma make the dials go up. Woo 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 woo. Dials going up. Dials going up. So that's the electricity. Colon. And here is Copy this line. Here is the, uh, what do we want to call this? The loading, I guess. The loading. And for that, we could, uh, Zim's got loading, like when you load a picture or sound, et cetera, it's gonna load and we can get the progress event and find out how, how much of a percentage is loaded. We've got all that when we actually are loading stuff. We're not really loading anything. I'm not gonna bother fake loading something, I don't think. Well, that's what we are doing. I guess we're gonna fake, I'm, I'm not gonna load something I don't need. <laughs> In other words, just to get those numbers. So what we can do, it's pretty easy. We just set an interval, interval. And uh, let's try an interval of one second for now. And we'll go for what, 10 seconds. And we'll just build it, build it up from here. We'll start with just something that's a little bit easy. And uh, we'll collect the interval object. And this is a, an arrow function like so. And we can say right here, how many times to run that interval, 10. So we're gonna run the one second 10 times and so every second it's going to go 10 times basically we get this obj which is gives us extra information like what the count is so let's zog the obj dot count and that's also how we can clear it from inside so we could clear the interval anytime we wanted by saying obj dot clear you can clear it from the outside by assigning the interval to a variable and then that variable dot clear okay so uh Let's check this out, shall we? And we refresh here, and we bring back the, the dev tools. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bop. So that gives us uh, in, ten intervals. That's handy, isn't it? The Zim interval is quite handy like that. It also accepts Zim V values, those things that we were doing with colors uh, earlier, where we can 
pass in a min and a max here or something, or pass in an array and it will pick from those things, or a series, that's pretty cool. You can put in a series when you're making sounds. Imagine this, you can actually set up the beats or whatever that's called, right? like MIDI kind of um, sound interval sort of things in here with different lengths of time and then play different notes inside based on the count uh, or an array of notes. So anyway, interval is quite handy. You can also make it start right away. That's true because sometimes you don't want to wait a certain amount of time until something happens. Uh, I don't think we need to start it right away. So let's leave it at that. And what do we want to do? We want to increase the dial and the slider. So let's try just one dial. So that would be parts dot get child at zero. So this is whatever is in the parts, the first child there. It's one way to do it. You could also go to parts dot items at zero. Mm, might be easier. Huh? Parts is a, a tile and tile has an array called items, but this is the items at zero then. So I don't get child at zero, get child at in round brackets. That's like a long command and it's your rudder. But anyway, parts are items array at zero. So that's whatever was made first there. We're going to set its dot current value. I think by default, all those things go from zero to 10 anyway, to equal to, oh, from zero to 10. No, I don't know if that'll make. I think they go zero and include 10, that's right. So sure, the value is equal to obj.count, like so. All right, let's try it. Okay, it was it happened to be a slider. So this time it's a slider and there goes the slider. Let's try, that's still a slider. There's a dial. Yeah, but maybe a bit smoother. So if we want that to go up smoother rather than, and that should well, obviously stop. <laughs> uh, it's gonna hit the end there. If we want that to go up smoother, we might want to go something like 0.1 there. And what would that mean to these things? So if we're going 0.1, the number of them would be divided by 0.1. And what would the count do? I think it's times 0.1. So if we said 0.5, half a thing, the count would be, I want to go half a, a step. Yeah, so I think it's times, the, or something like that. Shall we see? Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, that looks, that looks about right Let's see with the dial. Okay, that's successful. So now we do it with all of them. And to do it with all of them, we need to loop through all of the items. So, or we could just loop through parts. So parts is the container dot loop. Um, it's nice, the zim loop loops through a container, just like that. And it gives you in here, it gives you the part. Like so. Did we just do that? I think we did. No, we, we did a different type of loop. So this is looping through an array. When you loop through an array, you've got to put the array in here. We can't go the array dot loop. We could if we actually change the array, but we decided not to change the array. Also, we could just do a for each loop or whatever that is, the new, the, the, the JavaScript loop to be able to do something similar when we're looping through an array. But um, we use in loop. Okay, and each time we're going to be given the part, so we don't even have to do this anymore. We're just going to copy this stuff, paste it here, and go part. So each time we loop through parts, which is the container, we get the part, and we're going to set its current value to that. Woohoo! Did you think it'd be that easy? Welcome to Zim. And what do we get? Hello, maybe I'm speaking too soon. I think I am speaking too soon. Do you see a difference? Like those are all going up, that's great. Oh, I know what's going on. Every single dial, anytime we set that dial, it's actually doing a stage.update. Because usually we don't do whatever, 50, 40 dials, or whatever we're at, one, two, three, four, five, six times, one, two, three, four. 
Usually we don't do 24 of these staged out updates at the same time every tenth of a second. And so, oh, maybe that's not it. Maybe it's the fact that these are interactive. Oh no, take a look, it got faster when the dials finished. So it's definitely doing a little bit of bog every tenth of a second doing staged out updates is affecting the speed of the, of the blob animation. Well, that's easy enough to fix. Um, we have optimize, Zim optimize, uh, which says, hey dials, don't update yourself. Because we're already running uh, an update in this ticker. Ooh, uh, when we optimize, even the ticker won't automatically update. At that point, we've got to manually update unless we adjust the ticker setting, which is ticker.always. Um, round brackets. So if we set ticker.always round brackets, I think it will automatically, anyway, that's a ticker setting, but we can get around it like um, like this. Generally, we're going to optimize. So that's, we go up here so that the components don't update themselves, you know, multiple times. And because every time it stage.updates, it redraws the whole screen. So we've got 24 stage.updates every tenth of a second redrawing the whole screen on top of an animation of blobs with just blend modes and stuff. And it's just, you know, like we don't need to do that. So let's say right up top here, optimize equals true. And watch what happens. Great. So as I refresh here, you can see that it is changing. It's just nothing is updating the stage automatically anymore. It's only updating the stage as, as we drag this back and forth, which um, because of the scale thing and, and some rollovers. Oh, did it roll over? What are we rolling over to make it do that? I can't tell one of these things, some, something in there we're rolling over to make it um, update the stage. It might be these components are actually interactive. So if we, are they interactive? Yeah, the, the components are interactive. Although, right, the components are interactive, but they're not updating. Because if you think about it, right, this is, this is interesting. So as I roll over that, or as I'm moving that up and down, watch, I'll update it. Well, let me do it with a slider, it'll be easier to see. Yeah. And you see that? It is actually moving, but it's the rollover on the button. Okay, so that, that button's got a little rollover on it, and that's that, that or, or here or something anyway, has got a rollover it, and that's what's updating the stage. We don't need that anymore, so we could set all of those buttons to be interactive, false, or like uh, no mouse or something. So we could probably just put that on the tile, that whole tile, no mouse, so that it doesn't try and um, interact with it. What I was trying to get at was what? Um, even when we're changing the component, it's not updating itself. Because if you think about it, we would be calling a change event at that point. And in the change event, we make a bunch of changes and we update the stage. So the component doesn't really have to update itself because we're gonna make a bunch of changes and update it in the change event. So we made it so that the components update themselves automatically because it looks really silly. Imagine putting the component on the stage like this and, and, and people are going, well, it's not working. The dial's not going up and down. The slider's not going up and down. Oh, it did, what's going on? And so that wouldn't be a very good user experience for the programmer unless they really knew what they were doing. So we had to make all of the components update themselves and therefore update the stage but if you need to optimize, you can turn that off and do it manually. And that is what optimize true is equal to. I hardly ever have to use optimize true. You know, uh, it just, it is just a sort of thing that maybe you would want to do under some circumstances on mobile or something. Here, we're making so many and changing them so quickly. And when we don't really need to, that we've just turned optimize off. But in doing so, we have to manually update the stage, which is no problem because we're running a ticker. We just throw a stage dot update in there. And that is one stage dot update for everything else. Okay, and so we're back to normal once this happens. Oh, uh, why don't I spell update properly? Update, there we go. And nice. So take a look at that, huh? Smooth animation. 
Now, how's it doing on the rollover? Is it affected on a rollover of any of these things? These, these things are actually, and there's, there's now, you can see that the, these things, we, we can control them, <laughs> okay, because of, of the update stages. So that, that looks all right. We don't actually want to be able to control these things, though. So, oops, I missed the drag on that. We don't want to be able to control these things. So we may as well turn off that, and that will also save on rollover and stuff like that. Um, that would be up in the parts. So here are the parts. Dot center. Dot no mouse. And what that does is it turns the mouse enabled off of all that stuff. And we refresh here. And now I can't get in and adjust these things. And it won't do any rollovers. It's just like that stuff is almost like an image now animating. And that will optimize that aspect as well. All right, uh, good. We've got electricity, we've got dials. They look like they're going up pretty well. What do you think? Yeah, it's not too bad. Definitely something's happening. It would be good to have some sound. Now we have to make it so that when they're finished, we conclude. We say, I'm loaded. So we'll get rid of all this stuff. Say, I'm loaded. And maybe it needs some sparks or something like that. We'll see. Okay, so come on down here. There's Frankie. We're going to have to be controlling Frankie at this point. Let's let's sort of see what's what with Frankie at the moment. I should have. Okay, we didn't have to at the time. We didn't have to put them in variables, but now we can sort of see that it might have been nice to put them in variables so we know <laughs> what's what's going on here. With these things. This is the backing rectangle, but we'll just leave that uh, how it is. That's 410 by 410. That's a big rectangle in behind them. Here is something silver. That looks like the neck. I think we put the neck thing in behind. So why don't we call this neck? Uh, another way we can do it is just that's a neck, but this purple thing is its head. Oh, it wasn't the neck, it was the bolt. Sorry, the bolt. Yeah, this is 150 wide, so that's a bolt that's going through his neck. Where is the neck? This is the neck. Uh, we might need to actually assign some of these. If we're going to change the color to green, when he's all ready, we'll change it to green. So we'll go const head is equal to, this is const neck is equal to, but we don't need to put any do anything with the bolt. What are these? They're silver, and uh, they, those are bolt heads as well. So those are the bolt heads. So we can move these bolt heads up into the bolt area. There's the bolts. And this is black and black, dark and black. What are these? Are these the eyeballs? Or the eyes? Yeah, this stuff is the eyes. I don't think we need to do anything with the eyes. Oh, we might want to change the eyes. Which ones are the balls? These are the black backgrounds. We can leave those and we can call this const left eye and const right eye. Const right eye. Good. So that stuff's the eyes. And we've got the hairs. <laughs> hairs. The hair. <laughs> And what's this tile? The teeth! The teeth tile. Are we going to change the teeth? We might change the teeth too, but anyway, this is teeth. And therefore, we will const teeth this is equal to. Yeah, that's a tile. If we want to make a change to this, it's going to be a little bit awkward. We're going to have to loop through the tile and set the color of each of them. Or we could just remake the teeth, maybe, and stick new teeth on them. <laughs> Let's give Frankie new teeth now that he's alive, now that he's loaded. Um, OK, good. So we've named some things up here and sorted it out a little bit for Frankie. Uh, do we have to say backing? <laughs> backing looks a little bit odd, not, not labeled. All right, so how do we find out if we're done? Uh, there's no event on the interval. This interval object, uh, I don't think an OBJ has an event. I don't think we uh, ex um, 
extended an event dispatcher and made an event, we just said, all right, it's probably just as easy to inside of here say, if obj.count is equal to obj.total, then we're done. So that's how you find out if an interval is done. We could call a function here. That might be a good thing to do, a complete function, or we could just put all the stuff in here. What do you say? How about we call complete? Complete or loaded. Loaded. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Function loaded. Uh, like so. And in here we could do a test. How do we get this? How about we do something like const total is equal to, we'll just do a total of two. And I believe if we just set that to total. That will run for two seconds, and then in here we will zog that we've loaded. That's a, a log to the console. If you don't recall, zog. And uh, where is the console? Oh darn, <laughs> missed it. <laughs> Already loaded. Refresh. Dum 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 dum. Two seconds loaded. Okay. Good, so that's all working out. And that means we can do stuff like get rid of the parts. Parts dot remove from. And what were the tiles called? Tiles, I think we want to get rid of the tiles in the background. Tiles dot remove from. The stage that update the loop is like the blob stuff is doing it. No, we should stop the blob from animating. That might just be stop animate. Let's see if that works. That will stop all the wiggling because wiggle is considered an animate. Two seconds. Boop. Tiles is wrong and our stop animate did not stop the animate. So, oh, tiles is undefined. What was it called? What do we call it? The background stuff again. Backing. Oh, we didn't call it any. No, that was the backing of Frankie. Tile. Okay. All right. Tile dot remove from. It's funny. Tiles is tiles is good plural. Those are tiles. It's also a tile. A tile of tiles. <laughs> It's it's weird. It's weird actually. It, uh, yeah, because you want to. If I anytime I loop through a tile, I want to get the tile inside. So I, I usually call it tiles, and that's why I thought it was called tiles. But in this case, I call it tile. I don't have to loop through it, so that's fine. And okay, but we should get rid of that stuff. Um, we could, if we wanted to, put an ID on all of those wiggles. Uh, and then we could stop animate true, I think, and comma the you know the the electric or something like that. So that what that would do is it stop only the electric animation as long as up in here when we wiggled we would add oh it's a little bit further on but we would add an electric. Unfortunately, it might be a couple more parameters along. But anyway, that that would be adding the an ID to the wiggle. And we would add it to that one as well. And uh, remember, th th there's a couple more things in there that you would have to do before you get to the electric. And then we could have stopped the animate only on electric. OK, but uh, we can stop the animate just in general, because I think this is the only thing animating. And uh, we want to remove them. Though. So that is, what are they called? Electric 1 and electric 2. Electric dot remove, I should have double type this remove from, you know what I mean? Double typing in Adam, I select there, I select here and I go electric dot remove from, or I could have just copied it. And this is electric two, yeah, I mean, there you go. And let's have a look. wow. <laughs> Great! And Frankie needs to go alive! It looks like he could go bigger. Looks are a little bit deceiving because uh, there's the top of the stage and we want to put a message here. So if we did make him bigger, we need room for a message. 
that's where the message will go. Um, so we could make them bigger going down, but there's going to be, I think we in, in code pen there will be a Zim icon here. I think we'll just leave them the same size and, and uh, brighten the guy up. <laughs> brighten Frankie up. So what would that look like? We would say head dot color is equal to green. That's a Zim green. We better darken that though a bit. Darken. And what will we do? There was the neck. The neck will be an even darker size, like 0.7. Check it out. Let's also change the time. We have to wait to one second, and that way, as we make Frankie, uh, something happen. Head dot color, darkening at 0.3. Did we mess up the head and the neck up above? Dark in 0.7. Yeah, I think we must have messed up the head and the neck. <laughs> Did you look at it and go, wait, 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 wait? 80 wide by 100. Yeah, this is the, this is not the head. This is the neck. Right, because the neck was going behind the head. And this is the head. There we go. Yeah, Frankie. Yeah. Okay, so now he's, he's happily green. <laughs> Great. Happily green Frankie. And uh, the eyes. Let's do the left. Well, copy this whole thing. Copy. This is the left eye color. And what color should we make the left eye? How about orange or yellow? Should we make orange? And we'll darken this orange a little bit. And we'll make a right eye right eye, which is orange, and we'll lighten it a little bit. How does that look? Uh, or we can make different colors completely. I don't know. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. Mm, let's swap her. That's an Adam hotkey. I think you might have to install a no, plug I can't remember. Point 0.1, that's a bit too different, I think. We got to bring his teeth up. We got to get a message in here and then we'll sort of we can play around with things a little bit. All right. So, how do we make the teeth brighter? Well, let's do the message first. Uh, new label. And he will say, "I'm loaded." Whoa! <clears throat> And we will, well, we'll get to the, we need to get to the italic. We'll want to probably italic. So let's drop this down already to, this is the text of the label. So I know I'm going to get to a, a parameter later on. And this allows me to just um, get there by name rather than putting in a bunch of nulls and counting. This is the Zim Duo technique. So what else do we want? We want size colon 100, um, color, colon yellow, uh, italic, colon true. And there we go. No, oh, add it to the stage. <laughs> Dot pose. Hmm, 100 down, no, this is the X, zero from the center, 100 down, and we have to say the center then, otherwise it would be left, zero from the left, but that's, we did the center, and from the top, but top is default, so that's all we need. I'm loaded. Not bad, a little less size, 80. Is he still loaded? I'm loaded. 75. We could scale it in there in some way as well. OK, 70. Fine. 70 it is. Font of 70. How's it looking? Ah, good enough. Once again, if this were in this mode, that's um, how big that is. If this were mobile, 
that's obviously maybe the wrong way to go. We've got a stage that's more horizontal in here. Uh, just uh, just so you know, we'll adjust this background color to light or something like that. What we're dealing with is a browser. This is the browser window, and we're using the fit mode, which fits that in there. Right now, it, it's fine for horizontal, I guess, but not so fine for vertical. So if we were doing mobile, we've got two choices. We don't use the fit mode. Instead, we use full, which makes use of the full screen. And then we manually scale stuff inside, which we have classes for, like the layout class and a variety of scale twos and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, so it does look a little bit small and centered when it's all black like that, but that, that's what's going on. We haven't, and remember, in the past, we had all of that stuff going on. So um, I, I think we're going to be OK. It's just a loading screen. You would then get content after. Like it would maybe show I'm loaded for two seconds, and then the content would appear. Uh, well, whatever. Right? We're good? Hopefully we're good. Just so you know that uh, we can handle other forms of scaling and stuff. So where did we get to? Oh, darn it. I want to turn that back to black. Back to black. Good if I'm done. Back to black, and I'm loaded now is appearing. That looks great. I sort of get the sense that we need, well, let's try it out full and, and see. What do you think? Two seconds, I'm loaded. It kind of goes away really quickly. I think we need a transition of something. We could in start introducing animations and blend things out and blend things in, but I think we want more of a, um, Either he's got to like go wow, wow, and you know, like get big and small, big and small, big and small, and I'm loaded. Probably not. Let's sparks. I think sparks. Like if we just do a whole bunch of sparks at this point and it says I'm loaded, I think that would be good. It's like wow, drama. And with Zim, we've got what is called an emitter. So const emitter is equal to a new emitter like that. And if we dot center that, here, here's what that emitter looks like at the moment. Okay, great. So that's what the emitter looks like. I don't know what's going on with the poor emitter, um, but that's what, <laughs> weird. Oh, I know what it is. It's the, it must have something to do with the, um, I've never seen the emitter do that. It must have something to do with the optimize. Let's see if there's a, and optimize issues. I'm going to just temporarily take off the optimize and refresh here. Uh, okay, and there it is fine. Yeah, so there's something going on with the optimize in the emitter. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but we'll debug that. I haven't tried an emitter and optimize settings, so that's kind of interesting. It must be affecting something. All right, so there's the emitter. We've turned the optimize back on, but we're going to start the emitter paused. And not only that, we don't want a, a bunch of little colorful dots. It's like, well, you know, maybe, but it's a, not quite sparky. So we're going to emit something else. The object that we're going to emit will be a new poly. This is how we can get stars. And let's go out to the Zim docs to find out what the parameters of poly are. Poly. So here they are, the radius, the sides, the point color, up to the point size and the color. I'll just copy a few of those. I think that should be enough for us. And paste it into here. So the radius, the sides, the radius. Hmm. We will do the Zim V values. Min. Hopefully you're doing okay. How long are we in? 48 minutes? We, I was estimating this was going to take two hours. We, our first one was an hour or 50 minutes or something like that. And here we are almost at 50 minutes for the second. But so be it. That's a pretty good estimate so far. I think we're, we're nearly done here. So a min radius of... Oh, these things should be big, I think, you know, on the f most of the, the, the stage. Uh, let's go a min of 50 radius and a max of 200 radius. Oopsies. Max. So this is one of the Zim V values that we can pass in, is a range. And then every time it emits the particle, it's going to pick... Uh, the Zim V is pick. Um, 
it's going to pick that, it, their dynamic parameters, it's going to pick from that range. And then the sides, we're going to pick from this randomly. We're going to pick either six sides, seven sides, or eight sides, which we could have done a range. But the range is not, um, I think there might be a way in the range to set it as uh, whole numbers or whatever you want to call it, integers. But uh, we don't care in this case, but we would care in this case. We don't want 6.3 as, as the number of sides. How many sides is polygon? 6.57432 sides, please. So that may actually work just fine, perhaps in the polygon. It will ignore that, round it, or, or do something to it. But we can also just pick from six, seven, or eight sides like that, throwing in an array. And so that's fine. The point size is, again, going to be a range with a min of ooh, 0.6 and a max. If you go 0.5, well, if you don't go anything, zero would be five sides would be like a pentagon. No, yeah, is that what it's called? Or a hexagon, yeah, pentagon. Um, if you put in a point size here, a 0.5, then it becomes a star. So that pentagon, each of the sides gets angled in half of, you know, or whatever it would be called, like half of its possible maximum angle. But if you go to one, then it becomes a stick, like it's a stick star. So that's what the points are. So we're going probably more than just your regular star. So I'm going to go 0 0.6. And then the max, we, we can actually go past the max, and then it starts looping in on itself and looks really cool and makes cool looking stuff. But we don't want to do that in this case. So we'll go a max of 0 0.9. So that's quite, th a, quite a thin star. And then what about the colors? Well, let's do an array of colors. We will do some white. We have yellow text, so we'll do some yellow. And we have some maybe orange. I don't know. And let's add another white. So that means most of them will be white. And we'll get the occasional yellow and orange. So it'll pick every time it runs a particle, it'll pick randomly from one of these. And we've stacked the deck towards the white. Oh. What are we doing with this? We're just emitting it now. I think we're just going to see it emit. How's that looking? I, I want more force. I'm having a problem with it, isn't it? Oh, that's because I've got the, I've got the optimize on, don't I? Yeah, I think I have the optimize back in. So yeah, there seems to be some sort of problem with optimizing. Yeah, optimize true and the and the emitter. Uh, we only have to spurt them though, so I, I don't think it will be. So what we're going to do is start this emitter paused. So start pause, start paused, capital P, paused, true, like that. That means the emitter won't emit to begin. And then up here where we end the game, we say emitter dot um, spurt like so and we say how many we want 50 or something like that let's add some more force to that emitter though so they really bang out uh, force colon 20 I think the default is 10 all right you ready bum 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 <laughs> something went wrong what went wrong we have an emitter here. Oh, comma. Yeah. Refresh. That lasted a little bit too long, didn't it? Let's change the number right here. Num uh, colon five at a time. So that will really bang it up, but it's they're all coming from the middle as well. Uh, so we might want to randomize the... So this is now a bunch of properties that we can randomize. For instance, the reg x, the registration x between a min of negative 100 and a max of 100. And we'll do the same kind of for the y, but we'll make it a bit smaller. Make it 50 and 
150. What this will do is each particle will have a different registration point, which means it won't all start from the center. They'll start like randomized around. The particle emitter can also be vertical or horizontal and make particles fall or come across and stuff like that. But that doesn't really do it either. That's all from one place and it'd be falling this way or whichever way gravity is going. Whereas what we want to do is make it so that the particles don't all start in the same place. So each particle we put in, we're adjusting the registration point and you get something like this. As long as we have our commas in the right place. <laughs> Apparently we don't. Oh, uh, random colon. There we go. My apologies. So you were probably looking at that going, what? Yeah. Too much force, though. Too much force. 12. Do we even want gravity? That's getting better. Maybe it's fine with, maybe it's fine with the default force. Now that we've got all that stuff on there. Not too bad. You know what? The force should be random too because do you see what's happening? Now that we have so many, poof. It's like this, they all go and it's like this ring is being created. But if we, if we did them at different forces, so once again, min of uh, say five and a max of, maybe we can do 20 at this point. So now each particle gets a different force. Isn't this amazing? Like, I, I've never seen any system that's so cool. I mean, maybe we could have made the emitter work like this, but Zim works like this. These are dynamic parameters that we're passing in. We're passing in a dynamic value. We're not randomizing on the outside, because if we randomized on the outside, we'd pass in a random number, like say 15. But if we passed in 15, the force would always use 15. Next time we run it, it might put in seven. And then the force would always be seven. So what we're doing though is saying, please pick from these. And we're passing them in so that the emitter can pick from them. And this is really, really handy to build with. And we refresh here and great, that looks better. Now I don't have a ring. It's all kind of like just more of a, ta-da, I'm loaded. <laughs> yeah, sound. If we added sound, it would be amazing. Problem with sound is you have to actually click on the uh, canvas before the sound can play. <laughs> it's like, okay, you guys, click to start your preloader. And I'm kind of going, oh, uh, well. <laughs> it's really a shame, isn't it? We could have, uh, yeah, that's it. So if they don't click on their preloader, we can't play sound. So we're not playing sound. Thank you very much, mobile. Thank you very much, Google, for like treating us like babies. You know, I suppose I understand it. It would just allow apps to play sound when you might not want sound yet. So you have to click on the app to play the sound. So we could do something like that. It's you know like a start, but adding a start to a preloader is just like an erg. Anyway, so rest assured, Zim can play sound really easily. We just load it in as an asset and, and sound.play, but we're, we're not going to load sound on it. We're just going to leave it at that. And that has taken us to 58 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that cool? Let's, let's get this guy. Oh, let's make it real, though. we got to make it real. And that is the time is not one second, but 10 seconds. Let's open it up in a browser, too. So uh, here it is in a browser, and F11 that. There it is, full screen in the browser. We'll just do a refresh on it. Dum, dum, dum. So look at those dials and sliders go up. Can you concentrate on that? Maybe I want my electricity to go faster. Anyway, we get to the end, and I'm loaded. <laughs> Wonderful. This has been a Zim explore. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Sim Explore. It was a two-parter. That was fun. We got to build live together. I don't do that a lot. Sometimes on Explorers we look through code that's already been coded. So forgive any little question marks as we went along there. Hopefully there aren't too many. Come on into zimjs.com slash slack. If you're still here, that means you must like this. 
join us in Slack. You know, why not? Hey, come on in. It's fun building with Zim. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you make there. You can ask any questions there. Ciao.